Good morning, soldiers of the Most High. Good morning. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. All the time. Yes. <laughs> Would you grab your swords this morning? You know, the world celebrates Father's Day. So it's all you fathers. It's a day of remembrance of the true father. Amen. And that's what daddy wants. He wants a relationship. Amen. Amen. He's looking for those that are willing to have relationship with him. So that we become not only his children, sons and daughters, servants and warriors. But he's always our daddy. Amen. He says nobody can come to him until he, they're childlike. So you got to be childlike when you're with your dad. Amen? Amen? Childlike. In the book of Acts, in chapter 1, in verse 4, well, let's start at verse 1 so we get a better understanding. Is everybody there? Amen. Now I understand that Luke is the one that wrote the book of Acts. And it says here, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Theophilus was a, I believe that he was an attorney, a friend of uh, Luke's. And he was writing to him. He said, Until the day in which he was taken up after he through many, uh, after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during what? How many days? Forty, Forty days. And speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So after Jesus rose from the dead, he hung out on the earth for 40 more days. The purpose of that was to wait to fulfill because everything is associated and revolves not only around the tabernacle of God, but the feasts of the Lord. And where many people do not understand or know the feasts of the Lord because there are set time and sequences that are vitally important to indiv individuals as believers so that there's an expectation of something going to happen. These are God's in these feasts, God utilizes them for divine adjustments. All kinds of things begin to happen. So Jesus fulfilled the first three feasts. Passover. First fruits. Amen. Amen. And, and, um, and in his resurrection. And then he was fulfilling the area where when there was Passover, it was a feast of unleavened bread which is a representation when he went to hell. So he got for, uh, Passover, um, Feast of Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, and then the next feast he was going to fulfill was called Pentecost. And in this, so they were an ex expectation because they knew that everybody was gathered together to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. So Jesus, before he left, he said, look it, it's vitally important. In fact, he didn't ask them, he commanded them. And verse 4, it says, being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He was commanding them to wait. And I, I want to share again that he told 500 of his disciples to wait. Only 120 obeyed. The other 280, or whatever it was, 380, booked. And I always say they started, they started denominations. There would be no denominations. Everybody got filled with the Holy Spirit and stayed that way in that day. There wouldn't be Baptists, Catholics, all of this other foolishness. Everybody would just be Christians. Amen. Amen. But because men rejected what God asked them to do, they missed an opportunity. 
So you got 380 of them that missed the opportunity. Because God always brings a divine adjustment to bring an opportunity. Does everybody with me? Amen. Okay, Romans 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Divine adjustments. You are here by a divine adjustment. <laughs> we call them interventions. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory with which shall be revealed in us. Oh, if we can just get through that. Amen. <laughs> for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. That's who are those? Us. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God, into the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit... Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved by this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope for why does one still hope for what he sees? For if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance or endurance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. The Holy Spirit helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray as we ought. Hello. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or what that means also is that cannot be understood. So when you're praying in tongues, you don't know what the heck you're praying. Thank God. For he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So while you're praying in the spirit, you're praying the perfect will of God as you're praying directly to the Father. Verse 28, read it. For we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Now you got to ask yourself, are you called according to his purpose? Okay, if you're called according to his purpose, the next question is, do you love him? And now I want you to understand it has nothing to do about a feeling. It's a choice. Everything starts out by a choice. Somebody just doesn't fall in love with someone. They first make a choice to love them. Then they fall in love. Does everybody get it? It's a choice. Because you have the power to choose. So he says, all, all things are going to work together for the good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his prayer. All things are going to work to the good. All things. So no matter what you're going through, all of this suffering, all of whatever, no matter what you're going through, everything is going to work to the good if you cooperate. Amen? Amen. Is everybody okay? If you do what? Cooperate. cooperate. For whom he foreknew, he what? He also pre predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predest, pre, predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Oh, wow. So you're going to go... He says, in other words, you're going to go through stuff. But he is with you to exchange your old for the new. Has everybody got it?
There must be an exchange, old for new. The word says that he was in Christ as a new creation. Old things pass away and all things become new. That means God's going to have divine adjustments in your life. Why? Divine adjustments bring opportunities. Is everybody okay? Praise God. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Pete chapter 2. In verse 1. Let's speak it, please. Therefore, laying aside all what? Malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a what? Living. A living stone rejected by, indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Everyone say, I'm chosen, I'm chosen. And, I'm precious, and I'm precious in the eyes of God. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house. A holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. What are those spiritual sacrifices? Worship and praise. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. What's the word believe me? follow. So he who follows him will not be put to shame. Verse 7. Therefore to you who believe he is precious but to those who are disobedient the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling uh, and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the what? To the word. Because they don't live out of the word. They live out of emotion. To which they also were appointed. But you are a what? Chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous. See, he called you out. You didn't choose to come out. Amen. Somebody got it. Amen. He, called, he gave you an opportunity. When he called you out, he gave you an opportunity to grab hold of his hand and choose to come out then. Who once were not a people, but now are a people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Again, he chose you. This was a divine intervention. It was a divine adjust adjustment. He's always making divine adjustments for me and you. But there are things that can be brought by divine adjustments. In, his, in Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons and daughters by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in all... One, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In other words, he chose us. He chose me and you before time. We were predestined. The, here it is. I want you to grab hold. Even though he chose us, we still had to cooperate. He chose you, but you have to turn around and choose him. Amen. So he chose us before time. He keeps us. Not only by the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is always guiding us. There's something that the Holy, Holy Spirit is always trying to do. He's trying to cause me and you to cooperate with divine adjustments. Divine adjustments. 
Uh, what are these divine adjustments? These divine adjustments of intervention to bring opportunities of growth, maturity, trust, prosperity. I want to share that again. These divine opportunities bring growth, maturity, they bring trust and prosperity for his glory. Ezekiel 36. Is everybody there? <laughs> Are you at verse 20 something? Verse 23, Ezekiel 36, 23. He says, what now? I will sanctify my great name which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed, when I am honored, when I am feared, when I am respected in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land, into the place where he sets you to learn so you don't burn. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness and from all of your idols. From all of your idols. You know, you can be your worst idol. And I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I'll take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and I will cause, everyone say cause, oh. cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. This cause is di directed by divine adjustments. Then you shall dwell in the land that I have gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Caused by what? Divine adjustments. That you don't... Look at God is causing things in your life that you don't even know about. He's making divine adjustments that you don't even know. Now, there are areas where he causes things. Then there are areas where you cause things. Amen? Or somebody else is causing a divine adjustment. Most of us are still alive because somebody was praying for our blessed assurance. Amen? <laughs> in these areas of divine adjustments, these always result in an opportunity to cooperate with God. Why? Because he wants to bring us to another place, another level. And he's always bring, trying to remove old to bring new. There are two things that will, where we cooperate with cause divine adjustments. That's prayer, praise, and worship. When you decree in the word. Listen, so many people miss. They miss so many opportunities because they're not willing to cooperate with the divine adjustment to become Again, the purpose to bring a change, this is a purpose to bring a change to our hearts and cause us to surrender. It brings us to a place of humbleness and the character of Christ or put a character in us that is pleasing to God. In everything that you and I are doing, the heart always conceives that your heart is the character of your spirit. It is the core The heart conceives and the mind reflects. Then the mouth releases. <laughs> I want to say that again. The heart conceives, the mind reflects, and the mouth releases. Many people lose out because their minds prevent them for letting God reach their hearts. I want to say that again. Many people miss because their minds prevent the Lord from reaching their heart. So, they live out of the mind. 
And that ain't the mind of Christ I'm talking about. A while back, I shared this before. One day I was in prayer and I had a vision and I saw a bunch of suits. <laughs> they were these black suits. And all of these people were dressed in a black suit. I didn't know if it was a dude or a girl. I had no idea. It didn't matter. It wasn't about gender. They were just black suits. And they were all, and all of a sudden people were pressing up to this front. So it was a huge crowd, thousands and thousands of people. And out of some of them, they were pressing up to the front. And when I began to look, because the Holy Spirit was saying, look. I saw all of these same suits, but these certain individuals were pressing up to the front. And as I began to look clearer at these individuals that were pressing up to the front, they had no heads. And I thought, what? He said, I'm raising up an army that is headless, that does not live out of their mind, but lives out of their spirit. And all the other ones couldn't get it. They were all standing around. And they couldn't understand they were being pushed aside where all the rest of them were moving to the front. That's what God is raising up. You can't, you can't have fellowship with God out of your mind. It's out of your spirit. It's out of your heart. That's why when you worship, you go after him. So you can't go after him if you're going after him out of your mind. You just, you just sing. There'll be no heart change. There'll be no compassion. There'll be no desire for his presence. There'll be no desire to embrace him. There'll be no desire to express your love towards him. There'll be none. Because you're still living out of your mind. And you'll never press through into the holy place. You'll stay in the outer court. And you'll miss many opportunities. Not only to change, but exchange. Is everybody okay? Psalm 10. See, so many people think this is some kind of a religious act. <laughs> but it isn't a religious act. This has got nothing to do with religion at all. This is about kingdom, kingdom business, a father, children, and a military operation. Psalm 10, verse 16. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. The Lord is king over, I mean, the Lord is king forever and ever. The nations have perished out of his land. Lord, you have heard the desire of the what? The humble. You will prepare their what? Heart. So it's going to have to take humbleness for allow to God to prepare your heart. You will cause your ear to hear. Ah, so there's something here. He says, when you humble yourself, I'll hear you. To, to do justice to the fatherless and to the oppressed, that the man of the earth may oppress no more. A humble heart will always, God will always hear. What does he do? He brings a divine adjustment. Because divine adjustments also come by your prayer praise, and worship. God rejects the prideful, but he gives grace, his plan, to the humble. That's called, listen, when God releases his plan to you, he's always bringing a divine adjustment. 1 Corinthians 10. Now, again, there are times when you don't even realize that he already brought the adjustment. First Corinthians 10. We had a divine adjustment Friday night during worship. A song came, boom. It was perfect. Set the whole course and the whole atmosphere changed. I knew that was my dad bringing a divine intervention, changing the atmosphere. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. 
and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. Are we supposed to still do that now? Yes. For they drank of that spiritual rock and followed them, and that rock was Christ. This is powerful. Why? Because the Old Testament is always the shadow of what was to come. But with the most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now, these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And believe me, they were not playing football. They were playing lustful. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. So if you can complain, believe me, you will open the door to a destroyer. Now, all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonishment, upon whom the ends of the ages has come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he what? Lest he falls. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make the way of what? Escape that you may be able to bear it. This is powerful. Listen, that's one of the things that God always does. Now, if you're willing to cooperate with a divine adjustment, one of the divine adjustments always brings a way of escape. That's a divine adjustment that the Lord just did. It's an intervention. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge for yourselves what I say. Wow. The way of escape, it's called grace, God's plan. What does he do? We escape the, the uh, evil deception and the wrath of God. It brings divine adjustments. And these divine adjustments, again, I want to emphasize, they bring opportunities. Every divine adjustment will bring an opportunity. In Psalm 32, but again, many people miss them. Psalm 32. Is everybody okay? Amen. Let's start at verse 1. Everyone say blessed. blessed. <laughs> yes. Blesses he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blesses the man whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old, through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my vitality turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of what? Deliverance. There it is. So if you cooperate with the songs of deliverance, will he make a way of escape for you? Always. It's called a divine adjustment. So you must cooperate what he's asking you to do to bring a divine adjustment, which will bring an opportunity. I will instruct you, he says. See, now look at after he, he's going through all of this stuff. He's repented of his sins. He realized he was getting dry because he hadn't confessed his sin. Couldn't get filled with the Spirit because he hadn't confessed his sin. Finally, he confesses his sin. He starts singing and praising God. It makes a way of escape. 
He cooperates with a divine adjustment. The Lord brings an opportunity. Now he's going to lead them to opportunities. Look at the next verse. He said, the Lord says to him, I will instruct you. And teach you in the way you should go. Snap. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like an idiot. Or do not be like the horse or like the mule. Which have no understanding. Which must be harnessed with bit and bridle. Else they will not come near you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. But he who trusts in the Lord mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. So he's trying to bring us an opportunity. He's trying to get us to these places. But so many people are stubborn, still living out of their head. Their hearts are still hardened. They haven't come to a place of complete surrender. They're still fighting for their lives. Psalm 40. Stop it. <laughs> Just stop it. <laughs>
O Lord, you yourself know. I have not hidden your righteousness in my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. So, it all started off with a sincere heart prayer. That's all it started off with, was a sincere heart prayer. Not out of the head, but out of the heart. God heard, rescued. What did he do? He brought a divine adjustment and brought another opportunity. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. Divine adjustments. Anybody ever miss a divine adjustment? If you didn't raise your hand, you lied. <laughs> and you need to repent. <laughs> Every one of us has missed them. Thank God he's merciful. He brings them around again. Amen. But man, some of us have missed multiples. Man, I missed so many of them. It was ridiculous. Then when I finally, then when I finally caught the one, I said to the Lord, what took you so long? <laughs> That's when I felt that slap on the back of the head. <laughs> Bonehead. <laughs> Been trying to rescue your blessed assurance all these years. He kept rejecting me. He wanted to do it your way and not my way. You didn't believe my word. You thought I was a liar. Of course, there was people that came around me and told me the word of God was not true. You know, I mean, I even had a priest tell me the word of God was, this Bible was nothing but a story. What the heck do I want stories for? So God himself had to come and tell me that the word was true. I believe it now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Daniel 10 and verse 7. Is everybody there? And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell on them, so they fled to hide themselves. So Daniel saw the vision. God was revealing something to Daniel, but the presence... See, and let me tell you, when people are not right with God, God's presence becomes a fear. But when God wants your attention, he'll move everyone out of the way to get your attention too. Sometimes those that getting our attention comes in multiple ways. <laughs> Sometimes it comes with terror. Sometimes it comes with circumstances, uh, traumas, <laughs> prison, uh, all kinds of things. Arrest, you know, whatever it may take. God is always trying to get our attention. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Okay, let's go a little further. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision for the, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell on them, and so they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words, and while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, with my face to the ground. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O oh Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand. Have you reached that place? Have you decided to set your heart to understand yet? Does everybody get it? The, from the moment you set your heart to understand and to what? Humble yourself before your God. You know what happens? Your words were heard, and I have become, I have come because of your words. Wow. Remember, he said, look at the moment you set your heart to understand, he humbled himself. He was praying. He was praising. He was decreeing. 
the Lord sent an angel to bring the message. Was God bringing a divine adjustment? Yes. For what? Another opportunity. Watch now. Um, verse 13. He said something powerful. He said, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, the archangel, one of the chief princes came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. He's not talking about kings of Persia physical. He's talking about kings that are called principalities of the heavenlies in the demonic realm. So here the angel of the Lord was trying to get to Daniel. I want you to know that angels, God moves still by angels. Yes. Things haven't changed in that arena. They're still moving. The angels are still, in fact, when you become a believer, God assigns 2,000 angels on your behalf. It's a legion. It's around 2,000. They're working on your behalf. Then he places one that's with you called a guardian angel who speaks to you sometimes and sometimes he, through the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get it? He will speak to you, but he will speak through the Holy Spirit in that arena because they're all voice of the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get it? So he'll speak to you and he'll be speaking to you through the Holy Spirit. Angels, look it. And any angel ever shows up to you, make sure you speak the blood of Jesus because if he's a, a deceptive one, a, a false one, they got to go. But we don't commune with angels. We commune with the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get it? Unless God chooses to send, send an angel to speak to you. Is everybody okay? So in this, these were demonic principalities where the Lord was sending angels on Daniel's behalf because he humbled himself. He said it's hard to understand and he had to wait. Well, in the heavenlies, it was, well, in the physical realm, or uh, it seemed 21 days to Daniel. But in the physical realm, it was only seconds. Does everybody get it? Because one day with the Lord is like a thousand years. Amen. So in the spiritual realm, it was seconds. Same thing with Moses. When he went into the presence of God, he was there 40 days. He thought he was there five minutes. He didn't drink or eat. He went in there, got all the information, and walked out. 40 days later, it was like, whoa. Because there's no space and time in that arena. Amen. So in this, that's why it's important for you to bind, blind, mute, and deaf principalities, powers of darkness, and wickedness in heavenly places that are coming against the angels working on your behalf. Hello? They're assisting you. Why not assist them? But see, the carnal mind doesn't get it. it. That's where you live out of the spirit, which is known as your heart. Okay, verse 14. Now I have come to make you what? Understand. understand. Okay, does understanding bring a divine adjustment? You mm -hmm. betcha. To make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. When he spoke, had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly one, having the likeness of the sons of men, touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and I spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me and I have retained no strength. How, for how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As, as for me, no strength remains in me. Now, nor is any breath left in me. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. Do you know that when you praise and worship the Lord, God sends angels that carry the presence of God. So while we're praising and worshiping the Lord, angels are coming into this room that are carrying the presence of God, fresh presence from the throne room of God. They come right from the throne room. They carry that fresh presence, and they come and release it into the sanctuary. See, because the sanctuary is nothing but a building. It's not the house of God till the people of God come. Then when the people of God come, we kick out all darkness that's been residing and we make room for the presence of God so he can change us, so we can exchange, so we can be healed, refreshed, so we can see again, hear again, and so forth. Is everybody okay? In John chapter 10. Divine adjustments.
See, when there are a lack of divine adjustments, people try to adjust their own strength. And it doesn't work. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 10, verse 7. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the what? The door of the sheep. And all whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. Is that happening? In so if that's happening in your life, then there's an open door to the thief. Amen? I have come that they may have life and that they may have life more abundantly. And how is that going to happen? By div divine adjustments. That means that you must cooperate. He will always bring opportunities through a divine adjustment. Always. It always starts with a divine adjustment to bring an opportunity. Always. But most of the time you don't even realize that there's a divine adjustment going on. Sometimes you do. And when you do, you realize, oh, that's, love it. Love it. Let's go a little further. I am the good shepherd. The good sh shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Verse 12. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep and am known by my sheep. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them I will also bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Wow. 1 John chapter 3. Divine Adjustments. You know, people want God to do something for them, but they're not willing to cause a divine adjustment. Does everybody get it? And heck, divine adjustments are caused by you, by prayer, praise, obedience. But again, if you're living out of your mind, it makes it very difficult. Until so you start living out of your heart, and there's a, a heart connection, not a mind connection. Mind is religious. Hardest fellowship. First John chapter 3 and verse 1. Beloved, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has been yet it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you, he who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteousness. He who is sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Wow. Children of God, if any human thing can attract you from God, you fall into a place of not his child. Does everybody understand that? You fall from the place of child. His child. If you allow human things to attract you away from him, 
then you fall from the place of child. What fall do you play? Then do you fall in the place of child of who? The devil. You fall back. Does everybody get this? See, this is where he talks about backsliding and going back. Because when you and I go back, where do we go to? We certainly don't go to God. Hello, come on, let's get real here. Amen. We fall from that place of child of God to child of devil. Amen. And then we begin to act like one. We begin to become rebellious. We begin to speak like one. You stay in that condition and you die. You don't go home. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 5. Sure got quiet when we mentioned that today. What <laughs> Say what? You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. He says it. Amen. If you're going to try to serve two masters, you will only serve one, and it ain't the Lord. everybody got it? Amen. You can't have it your way. This is not Burger King. This is kingdom of God. <laughs> First Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. Likewise, come on, read it with me. You younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. There we go. <clears throat> Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Now, that means humble yourselves, and he will set a divine adjustment for an opportunity. Casting your cares on him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he, he may devour. In other words, he's got a big mouth. <clears throat> it says, resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so you ain't the only one going through it. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered, hello, after you've learned, for a while, suffered for a while, be, be perfected, established, strengthened, and settle you. Again, this is not a religious or self-independent operation. It is a military divine order with submission, respect, and honor among soldiers of Christ and offices of his choosing. Those who live out of their minds will not grasp this until they mature more. They won't get it. Because this is a life out of the heart of the Spirit of God and not out of the mind. Submission is an area of when God gives us counsel, correction, and direction, it will bring a divine adjustment for an opportunity. But if you reject counsel, correction, and direction, you will miss many opportunities. And you'll do it in your own. You'll be prideful, independent, and never fulfill the fullness that God has for you. Does everybody understand? Listen, he's raising up soldiers now. Time's running out. We must be serious in all things. This is not a fantasy or religious hope. This is a reality. There is a true war going on. And that war is for your soul and for many souls. And many are dying who started off right but didn't end up right. And they're ending up in hell. We want to start right and end right. And it takes an area of death to yourself. Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Divine adjustments. So when, you, when you're praying about something, the Holy Spirit will come to try and direct you in an area 
to open the door for a divine adjustment so God can bring an opportunity. Does everybody get it? Again, I want to emphasize every divine adjustment always leads to an opportunity. Every one. Now, if that adjustment comes by the enemy, it'll be a false opportunity. Does everybody got it? Oh, hallelujah. But we're not going to talk all about that today. Psalm 24 and verse 1. Speak it. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. <clears throat> For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn to see. In other words, who can come in his presence? This is what he's saying. Coming into my presence. How many of y'all know in his presence you change? Every time you get in God's presence, a divine adjustment is manifesting for an opportunity. Every time. That's why we fight to get in his presence. See, when you go to a baseball game or a football game, or you can either be in the bandstands or be in the game. It's amazing how many people scream and shout for a pigskin. But when it comes to praise and worship, forget it. Because it's still living out of the mind and not here. There's not that understanding. You and I are to be fighting for God's presence. When I had my visitation from the Lord, I realized it was his presence that I was, I was looking for my whole time, my whole life. I was looking to get high. I wanted to feel good all the time. But it cost a lot of money. And the problem was, it didn't last. And it was always destructive. But when Jesus showed up, I realized, whoa, it's you I've been looking for the whole time. And you paid the price. He paid it for me to get in his presence. He made a way for me to get, he paid. Now that's all I have to do is cooperate. And when I get in his presence, he makes a divine adjustment. There's always an opportunity. Always something's coming. So we're to stay alert. Because something's coming. He's a dad that loves us. He loves to surprise you. He wants to show up with gifts. When you, I'm telling you, this is not some kind of religious garbage. But there's a part of him that operates as a father and a commander. And we have to be adjustable to both areas. Where we are his children, but we are soldiers. You can't be a child under the commander. You must become a soldier under the commander. That's where children drift. Amen? Oh, snap. Verse 3, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord. Why? Why? Because he entered his presence there's a divine adjustment occurring and he's releasing an opportunity for what? A blessing. Woo he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, you gates, and lift up and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in what? The Lord mighty in what? Battle. Hmm. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up your everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Ooh, who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts, meaning he is the commander of the military. He is the king of glory. And I want to close it. Mark 8. <clears throat> Humble yourself. Set your heart to understand and humble yourself and God will hear your words. Mark 8. Verse 34. And 
when Jesus had called the people to himself and his disciples also, he called the people to himself and the disciples. He's saying, everybody, whoever desires to come after me, first you got to have a willing heart to want to come after him. Does everybody get it? See, people think that God's just going to come to them without them doing nothing. It ain't happening. He came and did it already for me and you. He already came for me and you. Amen. Now he sits at the right hand of the Father, makes intercession, and sends his Holy Spirit and angels and the body of Christ to try and get us to a place, a position. So why? So we can come after him now. That's why he says, seek him. So he says, let him who, do, if you want to come after him, if you're willing to come after him, what does it say? Let him do what? Deny himself. Take up his cross and follow. For whoever desires to save his life is going to what? Lose it. Lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for a soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his angels. Whoever loses his life will receive a divine adjustment, always to bring opportunities and changes and blessings. How many of y'all want to be blessed? Well, he'd have to be an idiot if he didn't want to be blessed. Hello? And then you got to be willing to do whatever it takes to be blessed. Amen. Amen? So you need to forgive yourself of all of those missed opportunities. <laughs> Don't go back there. Cut them loose and go forward. Because God is bringing brand new ones if you're willing to cooperate. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed be imparted into us and, and part of every part of our being that would be quickened by your Holy Spirit and brought to remembrance so that we may grow, mature, mature press in, <laughs> and cause divine adjustments for exchanges and blessings for your glory. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen.